to monkey gardening. I'm a monkey, this is my garden, and today my courgettes, or a couple of them, have started flowering. That's quite exciting. Uh, and all of the uh, broad beans also in flower, so the bees will be going mental in the garden. Uh, so yeah, let's find out what's been going on in the monkey garden. Something else which is happening in this uh, main bed is there's some uh, runner beans growing, which I didn't sow here this year. Um, I must have left some of the roots in from where I grew them last year. Um, it's not taking too much space, I'll just let it do its own thing for a bit. Uh, you see there's quite a few of it, bit of it coming through. The other thing that's happening is um, that uh, chard which I thought was completely dead and then cut off, I cut the top off it, it's uh, really regenerating. Um, I should be able to eat some of this soon, uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, Lettuce beds are looking cool. I'll give you a full uh, walking tour of the garden at the end of the episode. Uh, for now, I need to get on and pot up some more of this stuff. Just doing some potting up here. Um, first job is pot up these tomatoes. These are ones I got from uh, my friend Emily. Um, and they're called Black Opal, which I haven't grown before and I've just looked them up and they look pretty cool. There should be a, a photo arriving on the screen. Uh, so yeah, just continuing to pot up uh, stuff out the cloche. Um, I'll probably plant some more stuff out in this bed in a minute. Uh, so yeah, just constantly potting things up. Um, and then eventually going to plant stuff out into this bed and work out where things are going to live um, for their final homes. Uh, the thing with tomatoes is you, when you're planting them on, you want to plant them quite deep. Because if, this, if you bury the uh, stalk in, in soil, it will sprout more um, roots out of that. Um, so you, you're okay to go um, you know, as deep as the uh, um, seedling leaves, or even a bit deeper. Um, so yeah, they're on the side of deep rather than shallow, and it'll put on a lot more roots, and you'll be a much happier plant. Um, okay, so I'll get on and do that, and uh, I'll catch you later. Right, my next job is to plant out uh, these sweet corn plants. A uh, bit of an experiment, I've never grown these before, um, but these definitely want to be in the hottest, sunniest bit of the garden, um, which is this area of my main bed. Um, so while I carry on procrastinating about where everything else is going to live, uh, that decision is already made, that they need the sun if they're going to do anything. So I'm going to plant those out um, in uh, side by side, rows of two, uh, get them in the ground. They've, they've lived in pots for far too long now. The tomatoes, I still need to work out where they're going to live, um, but they're okay in pots for now. I can keep potting them up for a little while. Uh, again, they'll want to be somewhere really sunny, but I'm not sure whether to put them in the bed or have them somewhere else. Uh, we'll see. Uh, just as I'm digging into the ground to put these sweet corn plants in, um, I found some more uh, runner bean shoots coming through. So I'll dig down, and this will be the reason. <laughs> I must have left quite a lot of uh, roots in the ground when I got rid of things. Um, at the end of winter. So yeah, top tip, if you don't want stuff regrowing, get rid of the roots as well as the top of the plant. Right, so that's the uh, sweet corn in the ground. Um, I actually stopped after the first two because it was so hot. I waited, waited till this evening when it was a bit cooler. It's been really warm today and it's going to be really warm again tomorrow. Uh, but they're well watered in. Good to get them in the ground. I can still get the polytunnel over them if I need to. And there's the tomatoes which I potted up today. Some others which probably need potting up into larger pots. I'll have a look at that tomorrow. Uh, yeah, lovely warm evening. I'm just giving my uh, potato patch a bit of a water and I spotted another uh, hawk moth beetle. Probably the uh, probably emerged from out of this bed. So I'm wondering how, just how many are living in there. Um, he's not doing any harm, living bee. Right, I'm going to give this uh, mushroom kit a go. Uh, it says it needs to be used by the 24th of June. Um, I'm going to get on with it. Uh, I'm not sure how much I'm going to have to film with one hand. Anyway, I'll show you what, what's going on. So in here is some topsoil that we need to soak. And then we're going to put that on top of this block of, I'm not quite sure what it is, sort of woody shavings or something. But that's what's got the uh, spores um, embedded in, in it. Um, so yeah, instructions are, move lid. Okay, let's do that. Right, one lid removed. Uh, step two, 
Raise the side flaps vertically, roll liner to the height of the flaps and roll over and down to the crease of the flap. Okay, okay so I've taken that plastic uh, bag, uh, fold it over the flaps. Step three is over the bag of topsoil, place it right on the kit, pour 100 mils of water into the bag, leave for soak for five minutes. Okay, okay. I'll cut back to that in a second. Okay, there's a bag of topsoil, there's 100 mils of water, pour evenly. And leave for five minutes. Okie dokie. Okay, so that's our five minutes soaking with water. And then it says to pour the contents of the bag onto the compost and spread evenly. I'll try and do it in hand. Okay, that's nice and even. And last step is uh, take the lid, loosely rest over the top of the side flaps for seven to ten days. Leave on until the white growth is just visible. Then follow the main instructions. Okay. And the main instructions say uh, keep indoors, temperature fourteen to twenty one, keep out direct sunlight. Uh, steady temperature, avoid radiators, radiators, keep moist, spraying once or twice daily. Um, so this can this can go and live in the seedling corner, but not in the windowsill. It can just live on the floor away from the radiator. Um, it's pretty even temperature in there. Uh, so cool. Um, yeah, I'll just have to wait seven to ten days. So we'll come back to that uh, in a future video. It's quite exciting. I've never grown mushrooms before, and these are my favourite chestnut mushrooms. Uh, so yeah, I'll catch up with those in a future episode. Okay, I thought I'd finish off this episode with a little tour around the garden, uh, get you up to date. Uh, the main thing to mention at the moment is how hot it is. So for the last few days, and uh, for the next couple of days, it's in the 20s uh, degrees Celsius, so in the 70s Fahrenheit. Um, plus it hasn't really properly rained um, for months. So since I've been doing this channel, I think we've had two maybe three days of what you might call proper rain so it's been incredibly dry um, so the uh, sun is doing okay it, it it looks a bit wilty in the sun but um the, when the sun's passed it bounces back it's not too bad um lettuce likes the sun i, I grew in this bed last year and it was fine but it's looking a bit battered by the sun unfortunately the spinach i planted uh, has got completely fried um i made a mistake um, spinach should be in a cooler position. I had it in that bed last year, which you might not think would make much of a difference, but um, this bed is in shade quite a lot of the day. Um, but I've got some other spinach plants, so I'll plant some somewhere else. I'm not quite sure where, where yet, uh, but that's a shame because I like spinach. Um, spinach in this bed might be okay. Um, it seems to be right at the moment, but it's, it's not in the happiest position. Um, in fact, quite quite a few things in this garden are really in it, kind of in the wrong place. Um, so anyway, let's start at the top. Um, it's my pea bed. Uh, the peas got absolutely battered by the wind. Um, plus, they, they they never really seem to be very strong plants in the first place. Um, I, I'm expecting to see some flowers by now. Um, I, I keep filling in the bed. I'm still getting lots of pea shoots, um, which is nice. So it's all fine for salads. I'm not sure if we're going to get much of a big crop of uh, Monge 2. Um, so yeah, just a bit unfortunate really. I don't think the seed was that good. Uh, maybe they don't like living here. Uh, last year they lived in the main bed. Um, so maybe they wanted more sun. Um, so anyway, let's work our way down. Um, these broad beans are all doing fine. They've all flowered. Um, they've flowered without growing into enormous plants. So that's good. Hopefully we'll get some decent beans. Um, they, they've been making the bees very happy. In this bed, um, both of the uh, blackberry and raspberry have put on loads of growth. There's loads of fruits coming. 
taking a lot of water at the moment. Um, the onions, I think the onions wanted to be somewhere sunnier. Uh, so again, last year I had onions in the main bed. You can see they're just reaching for the light and they're not getting that big. Um, but I think they'll be okay, we'll get, we'll get a crop out of that. Uh, radishes, again, not doing brilliantly. I think I might sow some more somewhere else, maybe in this bed here, in between the lettuce. Um, I mean, the other thing is that lettuce will go on growing into the autumn um, so I'll probably sow another couple of trays of uh, lettuce um, either to replace these plants if they uh, die off um, or to plant somewhere else. I might stick some in, in containers as well. Um, as long as these plants establish themselves a bit more um, they should get a continual crop. Um, the rainbow, I think I showed you this earlier, but the, the uh, rainbow chard which I cut off um, has really bounced back, that's pretty amazing. Um, the chard that I planted out is supposed to be rainbow chard, but it all seems to be the same colour, which is a bit odd. Um, that seems to be okay there. I've got more of that um, in pots ready to go out. Um, strawberries. Um, these little plants are producing little strawberries. Uh, some more peas there for shoots, they're quite happy. The uh, rosemary finally seems to be happy. Maybe that's the way it wants to live, more in the sun. Uh, more strawberry plants here. The uh, cuckoo spit problem seems to have disappeared now. Uh, more potatoes in uh, these bags. They're very slow to get going, but hopefully they will get going. These are all main crop potatoes. Um, the chitted and the unchitted are doing pretty well in this bed. Again, I would prefer to have had potatoes in containers, but at the time I didn't have compost. And we just had this bed to play with. Um, it would have been better to have had, had spinach and things in here. Um, I still keep finding loads of um, hawk moss um, emerging out of this ground. Um, at the moment I'm just trying to keep on top of watering. So I'm watering in the evening, but I'm also finding that some stuff it needs a second water in the daytime. It is really hot and dry at the moment. Um, these courgette plants are looking very healthy in the containers. Um, they seem happier than the ones in the bed. This big Strawberry planter is producing lots of um, strawberries. Looking forward to eating those at some point. Uh, that's the butternut squash. Um, that's, it's struggling to cope in the uh, main heat in the, main, in the middle of the day, so I have to keep moving it into the shade. Um, I'll probably plant that up um, very soon into a bigger pot. So, in the main bed, um, the uh, broad beans again seem happy enough. They're all flowering, so there should be fruit on the way. Um, beans that I've got aren't looking particularly happy for themselves. Um, they were a bit um, battered when I first got them. Um, but I've got some more uh, little ones here, and these seem to be a lot happier. I've brought these on in the uh, cloche. Um, so we'll find somewhere for those to live soon. Uh, so yeah, I'm here and show you. So here's more spinach. So I'll find somewhere to plant this out where it's not going to get completely fried by the sun. Um, here's some of the rocket I picked out, so I'll find somewhere for that to live. Uh, more chard and uh, more beans. Okay, so here we have uh, sunflowers. They seem to be getting on with things. Uh, some uh, coriander. So this is three or four separate pots which I've grown on and finally got enough to fill one pot. I've been struggling with herbs this year. Uh, some thyme, uh, mint. Uh, here's um, cabbage, mostly plant planted out. I'll probably have um, uh, brassicas in this bed. I've also got some uh, broccoli seedlings to plant, um, and I've got some sprout plants which I've um, grown on. Uh, more thyme there. I might combine that with this pot, and make one big pot of thyme. Some basil here, which is enjoying the sunshine. Um, I shall prick these out into separate containers soon. Um, so these courgettes in the bed, they seem a little bit stunted and unha unhappy, but they are producing flowers um, and fruit. Um, so I'll just let them get on with their thing. You'll, you'll see that the, the leaves um, go a bit droopy in the main heat of the sun. I've given them some extra water, but they'll be, they'll be fine uh, once the sun's um, passed. Uh, what else? Uh, tomatoes. These are good plants, they're nice and strong. I'm going to pop these up again today. Um, I, I reckon I can live in pots for a bit longer before I decide where they're finally going to live. So I'll pop these up. 
each time you pop them up you bathe them a little bit um, deeper you get more and more roots you get bigger plants uh, sweet corn loving the sunshine uh, last year's runner bean that came through is taking uh, taking off a bit and another corgi, uh, courgette plant at the back yeah it is really hot and it's due to be hot for another couple of days but then it's going to cool down a bit um, so yeah it's all a bit hit and miss um, and that's the way it is I'm a monkey gardener I'm not an expert <laughs> um, yeah still loving the, loving the garden all right that's enough for this episode thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one